Welcome to worship. We are now in the third week of Advent, as you can see by my three lit candles. This third candle here is pink and different from the rest. And that candle often represents joy. And in this Advent and Christmas season, I hope you are all able to find some joy. found in Luke chapter 3. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take joy, my 
I don't want to preach this sermon and you don't want to hear it. <laughs> it's winter time, it's cold, it's snowy. It's a time when we want messages of warmth, messages that make us feel cozy. We want sermons that are the equivalent of a hot warm of cocoa, sermons that are equivalent of a crackling fireplace, of a nice warm fuzzy blanket. I'd like to preach a sermon about John 3.16, God so loved the world. I'd like to preach a sermon about Luke 2. That'd be perfect. Um, you know, peace on earth and goodwill to all. I'd like to preach a sermon on uh, Romans 8. I'm convinced, Paul wrote, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's the kind of sermon I'd like to preach. That's the kind of sermon you would like to hear. Something that'll warm you up in the middle of these cold, snowy days. But instead, John the Baptist shows up. <laughs> and John the Baptist is John the Baptist. He comes into our beautifully decorated homes, everyone dressed in their best Christmas sweaters, and he comes stumbling in like he's drunk, a wild eye look on his face, half dressed, smelling like a camel, stubbing a dirty finger into our chest. He comes into our Christmas celebrations and just his existence, just his appearance, turns everything upside down. And then he starts knocking the tree over. Then he starts tearing the, the decorations down. No, John the Baptist unsettles us, exposes our middle class, small town, safe, American religion and turns it upside down. <laughs> I don't want to preach this sermon. And you, you don't want to hear it. Because John the Baptist takes aim at us and everything we hold dear, especially in Christmas time, and asks us, forces us to ask, is this really what Christmas is about? Is this really why Jesus came to this earth for tinsel? I mean, he takes aim at the Sadducees and the Pharisees, which are basically the pastors and the religious people of the time. And he says, you guys think you got to figure it out because you could name Abraham as one of your ancestors. Well, God could take these stones and make them into descendants of Abraham. It means nothing. And he says the exact same thing to us. He says to us, people who get paid to be at church. He says to us, you think you got it all figured out because you're a pastor. Or he says to us, a little bit broader, you think you got it all figured out because you're a member of United Lutheran Church. You think you got it all figured out because you are an upstanding citizen of Red Wing, Minnesota. And John the Baptist says, no. No, that's not what it's about. That's not what faith is about. That's not what following Jesus is about. That's not why, why Christmas happened. It's not why God came down and was born as a little baby. It's troubling, John the Baptist, because he takes aim at all of the, the comforting parts of our faith. Anytime any of us, and I am the chief of sinners here, anytime any of us wants to bring faith in as just a nice, comfortable blanket, a security blanket, something to hold on to when things get, get rough, something to, to cling to in the hard times, but something that doesn't challenge us or agitate us or push us in any way at all. Whenever faith is the kind of thing you just kind of do, for like an hour, once a week, and not think at all about any other time of, of your life. That's the faith he takes aim at, and he says, no, that is not, that is not faith, you brood of vipers. <laughs> I just, I don't want to preach this sermon, and you don't want to hear it. No. Instead, what John the Baptist calls us to is to bear fruit, and bearing fruit is the exact opposite of that kind of comfortable, easy, safe, middle-class, small-town faith. Bearing fruit is messy, and it's weird, and it's ugly, and it's uncomfortable, and it agitates us, and it's confusing. I mean, the thing about bearing fruit is there's no formula to it. If I could just say, to bear fruit, you just need to, you know, climb Barn Bluff at midnight. That's what you gotta do. Climb Barn Bluff at midnight and, and cry out, howl at the moon in Latin. You know, something like that. Do that you know, three times a week and you're set. Well, okay. I mean, it's a little odd, but sure, you can do that. But the trouble with bearing fruit is it's not that straightforward. It's not that organized. It's, it's messy and it's different all the time. 
Sometimes bearing fruit is going to work tomorrow and showing up and doing your job and just doing that day after day for 30 years. Sometimes that is what bearing fruit is. And sometimes bearing fruit is quitting your job. Is quitting your job and going and doing something totally different, something that might be even a little insane, something that your your family and friends might go to your spouse and say, what is he thinking? Is he, is he doing okay? Sometimes that's bearing fruit. Sometimes bearing fruit is standing up to the governing authorities. It's, it's staging a protest outside the Capitol. It's holding picket signs. It's, it's refusing to budge. And sometimes bearing fruit is listening to the authorities, listening to people who know more than you do, who've been around a little bit more, and, and listening to what they say. Sometimes that is bearing fruit. Sometimes bearing fruit is going with your spouse to a counseling session, even though you don't think it's going to do any help. Going one more time, and then maybe one more time after that, that's bearing fruit. And sometimes bearing fruit is forgiving. Forgiving yourself, forgiving someone else after everything has fallen apart. Sometimes that's bearing fruit. I mean, sometimes, sometimes bearing fruit is sharing your faith. It's telling somebody about Jesus. It's telling somebody, even though like your, your heart kind of gets into your throat and you think everything you're saying sounds weird and awful and you cringe as you're talking, but still you do it. And sometimes that's bearing fruit. And sometimes bearing fruit is telling your uncle to knock it off when he keeps trying to convert your Jewish cousin. Bearing fruit is messy and it's complicated and it's uncomfortable and there are no clear-cut rules, and there is no order to it. All we know about bearing fruit is it's about emptying yourself. It's about thinking of the other person before yourself. It's about giving deeply and sacrificially of yourself to others. And so, of course, it hurts. It's not about your own self-interest, and so it doesn't always feel right or good to bear fruit. But John the Baptist shows up, starts knocking stuff over, and calls us to it. Tells us to bear fruit tells us that that's that's what this whole faith thing is all about. It's hard and it's a sermon (laughs) I don't want to preach. Not today. Not now. Not when my camera might be knocked over. No. The good news is though that this sermon is almost over. I'll be able to go inside in just a few minutes. And pretty soon, we'll be singing Christmas carols and this agitated, uncomfortable feeling will go away. Sooner than it should. Pretty soon, I'll be inside (laughs) eating Christmas cookies and counting the presents under the tree, trying to figure out how many are, are made out to me. Yeah, pretty soon I'm going to take John the Baptist and I'm going to fold him up nicely and I'm going to tuck him away into a box and I'm going to take him down into the basement. I'm going to put him in the corner and I'll even probably put a lamp on top, one of those lamps that are broken that I know I'll never fix, but I haven't quite the heart to throw away. And I'll leave him down there, out of sight and out of mind. I won't let him bother me very much. At least not until next year when I bring him out again because I have to. Lord, have mercy on us. We are in desperate need of a Savior. Merry Christmas.
Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank you and tell you how proud I am of everyone at United Lutheran for stepping up and supporting our ministry the way you have during this very, very unique time. And I'd like to remind you of several different ways you can help financially support our ministry. One, you could text your dollars to the number listed here. Second, you can log on to United Lutheran Church Dot com and follow the online giving tab. Third, you could drop it in the mail to the church address. Or if you're comfortable worshiping in person, you can always put it in the collection plate. Thank you. Dear God, we pray for our planet, help nations, companies, and individuals care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we ask you to guide the leaders of the world, nation, and city. Help them make decisions that respect and protect all people. Lord, in your mercy. Maker for teachers, directors, coaches, and small group leaders who encourage us, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we trust all these things to you in the name of Jesus, who always welcomes, loves, and forgives us. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.